hello everyone welcome to this vlog so if you don't know me i'm sambit i do these vlogs on living studying and living in netherlands and also i am doing the vlogs about uh, studying in europe some few vlogs so please check my videos if you like them then please hit the thumbs up and share the videos among your friends and don't forget to subscribe my channel so coming back to the point thank you for all the subscribers who are watching and commenting their requirements based on that i make these videos so today the topic will be based on one of the comments of a subscriber who subs commented like a month back uh, check his profile here so, mr mishra thank you for the comments so i'll address one comment in this video very short video so the main focus is what is the actual difference between a master thesis and a phd thesis so before going to that i want to introduce that you have a master thesis so in netherlands to graduate to finish your masters you need to do a thesis which is usually lasts for nine months or 12 months depending on the number of ects you need to do and your phd which is like a four years program here in netherlands also has you need to write a thesis at the end so let's move to the comparison between them like what are the similarities and what are the differences between both so moving on to the first point time so as i mentioned again uh, for the phd thesis the duration is four years for master thesis it's usually nine months and in some faculties if they have more ects for the master thesis then they usually have like a one year thesis structure so ideally any thesis first you do a short literature study that is lit by literature you mean like to get the background like to see what is your i mean first to decide the scope of your research and then you see the literature where you find what are the articles that have been written before on that particular topic you try to find some gaps where you might contribute or maybe you uh, reiterate or repeat some works in the past and you add a layer of uh, sophistication or a twist on top of it which is your additional contribution and that helps you to have a contribution which will end up in writing your thesis so this is what every thesis is focused so in masters as i mentioned now it is like that because your time duration is too short so after finding this contribution you also need to make certain contribution so maybe it is in a month or two months uh, if you're in computer science as i was then you maybe build a prototype or maybe make some pro contribution like to uh, build some kind of a additional library or something like that and if you're in other faculties maybe do some experiments in the lab or uh, i don't know it depends on your faculty uh, so apart from that it's like literature study then the gaps then the experiments and then you write the thesis so ideally writing time for the thesis is like uh two to three months but it depends sometimes people while doing the experiments try to make the skeleton of the thesis that is they try to make the frame like what will be my chapters and how am i going to fill it so they fill the details later this is talking about the master thesis talking about the phd thesis i myself is now in my second year of my phd so whatever i know till now uh, phd thesis is completely different than master thesis in some way i feel that when you write the thesis it's much easier when you're doing a phd as compared to masters because uh, in masters you at the end you write something around 80 to 150 pages thesis at the end so sometimes you might feel like bored or maybe repeating certain stuff which you have written before in some short drafts or it depends so sometimes i i felt it was more tough maybe because initially i was introduced to academic writing while masters so maybe that may be also one of the reason but in phd the advantage is that you toil hard for a longer time so ideally people here write their start writing their thesis in the final year of the phd maybe in the beginning of the final year or maybe 
after three or two months or something like that in the last eight months so what they do is here ideally you have like four six eight whatever be the number of publications that you have so each chapter in your thesis of your phd is ideally each publication so sometimes people have less publications because of some issues with their experiments but their promoters or their supervisors are really happy with their progress so still they allow them to defend their thesis on time in phd even if they don't have that sufficient number of publications maybe they require four they have like three or two uh, which includes conference journal or anything as demanded with high impact factors so what they do is like they have like suppose six chapters then each chapter may be one of the publication and some chapters to make the storyline consistent because at the end of the day you need to be a good storyteller that is the main thing so you need to elaborate or or maybe make it more specific like what you want to say and what was your contribution and how does it add value and you need to stand your ground when you defend the thesis that's what you do so some chapters may be also unpublished work maybe you like send it to a journal and you're waiting because normally ideally a good journal takes like six months to somewhere maybe a year or maybe more for pub till the time you send until the time it is published so that's why that's the uh, main thing so so i have i think i have mentioned a lot about the structure so the thing is like some unpublished works if you have less publication can also be a chapter but ideally 90% of the time 99% of the time it's like you have published something so you just compile them in different chapters and make a book or a thesis which may be like 200 pages or 300 pages pages are not important the quality of the work is important but ideally on an average it's between 200 to 300 pages in a phd and master thesis is around 100 or 80 or maybe sometimes 120 depending on the work you have if you have something more to have mention in the appendix or something i don't know salary talking about salary if you do a master thesis in a university then you don't get a salary ideally if you are in the same university in which you are enrolled for masters you obviously don't get a salary but sometimes if you go on exchange programs and maybe manage to do a thesis somewhere abroad which is ideally possible because everything is flexible here it depends on your supervisors and what kind of uh, links the university has with the other universities so you need to ask beforehand and talk with them engage with them be proactive then you might get some salary maybe to sustain yourself in that foreign university and if you do an industrial thesis which is really a good path for most of the people who don't want to be end up doing a phd they want to do a uh, job after masters that is what most people want i'm not lying here so then the best thing is uh, you do an industrial thesis and you get a salary which is roughly around in netherlands it varies between 500 to 800 euros uh, per month so that is enough for sustaining your living expenses in netherlands including your rent food and everything so that's what you get if you do industrial thesis that is the option and talking about phd i have mentioned that many times before check the information card in the corner so i think i have mentioned it in the week one video and other videos like you get a salary which is decent enough i'm not going to go into the details because i mentioned it before so you get a nice handsome salary and you're well paid for the whole duration of four years of your phd and your salary varies year after year so talking about publications in master thesis publication is not mandatory although it is highly recommended that you should publish if you want to apply for phd later it's highly recommended because if you have that then your cv or your profile or the impression that you create when you appear for certain positions that you apply is really really helpful i mean i tried hard that's why in my thesis was destined for nine months but in my case i tried to give it one year so i tried to finish the courses accordingly and what it helped me was i ended up having a publication which helped me a lot when i was applying for the phd interviews but still if you don't manage to have a, a publication then don't think that you are like completely i mean like uh, you are in some danger or something it's not like that so just calm down cool okay so talking about phd 
Ideally, they ask for four publications in all over Netherlands, but it varies from faculty to faculty. There's no definite sweet spot or a number. It always depends on your supervisor. So a supervisor or the supervising team should always be happy and you should be in line with them. So you should walk along with them, like what they expect and what you offer, both should always be in line with each other. Then it will be fine. Even if you have three, you have two, it doesn't matter. So those four can be like a mix of two conferences, two journals or uh, some conferences, some journals, it doesn't matter. So four is the ideal number. But again, I said, if you have three, maybe one of a chapter will be unpublished. So it doesn't matter. That's what PhD is. But you will know, obviously, in the coming two years, as I make the weekly vlogs, you will come to know about how many publications you actually need and what puts you in danger and what are the risks and what are the advantages or what can be expected. So talking about supervision, Ideally, when you are doing a PhD, then you get a, it should not be called good quality. That's what you deserve because you are doing, you are becoming a PhD like a doctor. So you need a supervision team where ideally you have like one or two professors. Normally it's one, but as in my case, it was by accident. I'll mention it before. I, I, I mean, I'll mention it later, but uh, in my case, there are two professors, but ideally you have one and maybe one assistant or associate professor who is your daily supervisor so normally two and if you are doing a phd thesis in collaboration with the industry that is also possible sometimes in phd you have a thesis which is part of a project with a university or an industry and if you have an industrial thesis then normally you have another additional supervisor from the industry where you're working and that's what so you have like three depends three or four people and which will be like one professor at least so that's what your, your supervision team is and in masters normally you have like a assistant or associate professor who is your uh, supervisor and uh, ideally they are like one and they generally as master thesis it's not like it is considered as a low graded but the thing is it is very short duration and they don't expect uh, you to like, uh, I mean, they don't try, want to give too much of their valuable time to master thesis students. So normally for your daily supervision, you have like maybe a PhD or a postdoc who is working in that field and he has a certain sub challenge that he wants to solve. So normally they make it as a small project, which is valid for the duration, which also helps you to achieve a master thesis and also helps that PhD or the postdoc to proceed a little bit in his research. So that's why they supervise you and they achieve something from you if you end up in a publication and that also helps them to proceed with their PhD thesis. So it's like a win-win for both the parties with proper planning and proper uh, talking. So what did I miss? Mm. Like the mental state and the miscellaneous things. So what are the miss? So I think it's the mental state. So mental state, you can say for me, because I was very new to the academic and scientific writing. So master thesis was something little bit thesis was a big steep learning curve for me uh, because in india when you do a bachelor's in state universities i don't know about the iits and all uh, you don't get that much acquainted uh, doing experiments and having a very uh, i mean proficient programming background is something different but academic writing, critical thinking and compiling them into a coherent simplistic structure is completely new. I didn't have that much experience, frankly speaking, coming from India. So that helps a lot like this. That, that's why this was something new and it was a steep learning curve for me. But after four or five months, I was quite used to it. And in a way, the thing that helped me a lot, I repeat again and again, because instead of nine months, I tried to give three more months as I was also thinking that this is something new. I should give more time so that I feel comfortable on the course of my uh, PhD. That's what was my experience. And talking about the PhD thesis, I think by the time you do a PhD, if you finish your master's here, 
it's an advantage but even if you finish it in US or maybe in other European universities where you have some kind of a research experience like academic writing or even if you don't publish but if you do a thesis like this a short thesis uh, then it is better so in comparison to that I think in US you always no, don't do a industry uh, thesis you sometimes work with the industry and then you come to PhD that might be a minor issue while writing and initially writing our proposals but it depends as it is a longer time so you fit in you take some time and then you fit in easily and it's okay and i always feel writing the phd thesis is easy but i don't know you will see it when i write my phd thesis so I hope you like this video. I will make many more videos. I have noted down all the comments that people asked like about the universities in Netherlands, the academic requirements to get into the universities in Netherlands and many other things I have noted down. There are like six to seven video lists depending on my time because now I'll be traveling for some conferences in coming one or two weeks. So depending on my um, availability and time. I will make all these videos step by step. Keep watching, subscribe to the channel, smash the thumbs up button if you like the video and don't forget to share with your friends and near and dear ones and see you in upcoming videos. Till then, peace off.